caused the Titan sub to implode. Hi, I'm Peter Zioroski with All of Fact Shipping News. In this video, I want to provide an update on the Titan submersible uh, implosion and uh, take a look at some of the possible uh, causes or contributing factors to what happened. Uh, it came out pretty quickly once the debris was found that the U.S. Navy had picked up the uh, implosion on their undersea listening network. Um, we've also now received information via James Cameron um, that the crew on board the Polar Prince likely knew the outcome uh, almost immediately. Monday morning when I first found out about the incident, within an hour and a half I had the following information. They were on descent, they were at 3,500 feet, they lost comms and tracking. So for them to lose comms and tracking at the same time, sub was gone. We got confirmation within an hour that there had been a loud bang at the same time that comms were lost. I knew what happened. Sub imploded. I, I sent emails to everybody I know. I said, we've lost some friends. The sub has imploded. It's on the bottom in pieces right now. I sent that out Monday morning. So I want to talk about a couple of possible failure modes for the Titan submersible. As I've been doing some more research and watching some other videos, I've noticed a few things which are quite concerning. We saw earlier how the submersible is two titanium rings on either end of the carbon fiber cylinder, which the um, titanium domes then get bolted to. I'd like to point to uh, Jake Kohler's video, uh, who goes by uh, Delmid on uh, YouTube. Uh, he was invited to uh, tag along on uh, this year's Mission 3. Um, they were unfortunately unable to dive due to weather, um, but he did climb into the submersible for a uh, brief test dive um, that was cancelled before they got off the platform. Um, and in his video, he shows uh, him getting bolted into the submarine. And you can see, um, one, the 17 bolts for a ring that size is not a whole lot. And two, there does not appear to be any seal uh, between the uh, titanium nose cone and the uh, ring that's bonded to the carbon fiber, um, which is certainly uh, questionable. Another video that I saw that showed them bolting the uh, front uh, dome onto the ring, that's a huge source of concern because there's, no matter how closely uh, those titanium pieces are milled, uh, it's not going to be a perfect seal and that's going to be a possible source of failure. The other thing which I saw that someone pointed out was that the two monitors uh, for the control system uh, are screwed into the hull. And when you see other images, you notice the lights on the ceiling and some other things that just appear to be screwed into that carbon fiber pressure hull. Uh, the ability of a pressurized cylinder to resist the pressure that's acting on it uh, is in part to is accomplished in part by having uh, like a continuous density of material. On other deep submergence vessels, the the cylinder that, or they're typically spheres actually, um, is made out of steel. It's manufactured to very high tolerances, and it's a known density, and it's checked either via X-ray or um, ultrasound to ensure that there's no defects within that material so it's a consistent strength around. That's difficult to do with carbon fiber to begin with. And then if you start drilling holes on the inside to mount equipment to that pressure hull, you're actually introducing weaknesses and reducing the effective depth of the material in those places. Uh, so it's entirely possible that the carbon fiber shell failed as a result of one of those mounting points. Some experts have also raised concern with how the hull was constructed. Using the winding method is arguably weaker than a cross lay. Um, others have raised concerns about just the use of an auto body scraper to apply the resin. Um, and also that this appears to be taking place in an open warehouse uh, with no uh, climate control or 
controls for dust or other pollutants to uh, enter the mix, producing inconsistencies. And here in the final clip, you can actually see that the whole surface is quite rough. We've already discussed the uh, window and its rating of 1500 meters um, and the problem that that is. Um, but along the same lines, uh, OceanGate advertised the uh, maximum depth that the sub was capable of reaching as 4,000 meters. The Titanic lies at about 3,800 meters. So if the test depth for the submersible is only about 200 meters more than uh, the depth that it's supposed to be operating at, um, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room based on that design um, for a safety margin. Typically, submersibles and other pressure vessels are tested at a uh, value that is significantly higher than the pressure that they're expected to operate at. So a submersible that's expected to function at 4,000 meters should probably be tested to be uh, known to be able to operate at 8,000, giving you a two to one safety factor. Um, you know, some pressure vessels might even go to a three to one safety factor. All indications are that um, the hull was designed to go to 4,000 meters. 4,000 meters is the test depth uh, because if your hull was capable of going deeper, even theoretically, you'd probably be advertising that the max depth is 8,000 meters and not four, even though you'd probably only safely go to for ideally that's what you would do um, but that doesn't appear to be in the case so it looks like the design doesn't have sufficient margins of safety built into it I'm sure more will come out in the coming days I'll keep making these videos um, if you like them uh, please like the video subscribe to the channel to get updated when uh, further videos come along and thanks a lot for uh, paying attention